Hey, Trina Weaves here. I launched this channel in 2018 with the aim of showing a few of my friends how Pokemon Go actually works, since they only played like a little bit of it way back when the game launched in 2016. Right after I launched the channel, Niantic went on a massive features kick, added loads and loads of extra things. So this video covers loads of the basics that weren't around in 2018, and I hope it helps those of you who are just getting back into the game. Let's get started. So the first thing you're going to have to do is go outside. Niantic do like to encourage exploration and exercise and connecting with other people. So it's an outdoor game. It's an augmented reality game, which means that when you try and catch Pokemon, you might be able to see the background, but I'll get to that. So we see here, I'm standing next to what's called a gym and over in the distance, that blue square thing is a Pokestop. So we'll head on towards that. And you can see my avatar is walking as we go. When we get close enough, that'll turn into a circle. There we go. So we can open that up. And that is what's known as a point of interest or a Pokestop. Spin the Pokestop. And you get stuff. So that's Pokeballs, raspberries, and you may have seen research popping up there. Research is essentially a bunch of tasks that will get you extra encounters or extra items. And I cover that in more detail in a separate video. And you can also see out here, we have Pokemon. So that's a spoink. And in order to catch Pokemon, all you do, press on the screen and swipe up to throw the ball. I am not very good at doing this with one hand. So you can do a straight throw. But you're better off doing a curveball because that adds a little bit of an extra chance at catching. So to do a curveball, again, press on the screen, spin in a circle until you see sparks coming out of the ball, and then toss it sideways and you can see very clearly that it curves around. There's a few methods to this and again, I have another video that goes through it in detail. And in that case, the Turtwig fled because he's not very nice. Another spoink. And this time I'm going to go into a few details on what's actually showing up on screen. So first of all, we have Spoink, which is the name of the Pokemon. You will also see CP617. Now that is a representation of the Pokemon's strength. It takes into account the base stats, as well as this individual Pokemon's extra stats on top of that. And then it's all multiplied by the Pokemon's level. Once again, because this is a catch up video, I have a bunch of specialist videos that will go into a deep dive on the Pokemon screen and I will link all of those in the description as well as using YouTube cards. Tap on the right hand side where you see the Pokeball and that gives you a variety of different balls. Red are normal Pokeballs, blue are Great Balls and yellow are Ultra Balls. Choosing a Great Ball will give you a slightly higher chance of catching and choosing an Ultra Ball will be even higher still. So I'll go back to the red Pokeballs for a minute. If I hold this down, you'll see a circle appear around the Pokemon. Right now it's yellow, and that means it's somewhat hard to catch. So if I go to the Great Ball, it looks more green, and that means it's easier. And then with the Ultra Ball, it's a bright green, which means I have the highest chance of catching. But if a Pokemon attacks, while it's attacking, you can't actually catch it, and that's why the ball bounced off. So you got to time your throws right. Get inside the circle and you'll get either a nice, great or excellent bonus. That gives you, again, a higher chance of catching and slightly more XP if you do catch. As you can see, that was a nice throw in a curveball, so I got a little bit of a bonus. The number in the top right says I got three Spoint Candies and the number in the top left means I got 100 Stardust for this catch. That varies again, if it's a higher evolution of Pokemon, then you get more Stardust and more candies. As you can see, the Pokestop after I spun it was purple. It's now blue, that means that five minutes have passed since I spun it and therefore I can spin it again for more items. One of the other things you can get from Pokestops is gifts. Gifts are items you can send to your trainer friends, your Pokemon friends, and I'll go into that in more detail later. Now over here, this big red thing is the gym. Click on that and you'll see a bunch of Pokemon in there. 
I'm Team Valor, which is the red team, and we currently own this gym, which is why the gym's outline is red. If the gym is owned by Team Mystic, then it'll be blue. If it's owned by Instinct, then it'll be yellow. Because this is the same team as I am, I can't battle in this gym. All I can do is go into the Pokemon and feed them berries. Once again, there's a whole lot of stuff going on in gyms, and it's in a separate video. Gyms also have their own photo disc, which is basically the same thing as a Pokestop. So if you click on the bottom right, you can go up there, spin it, and just like a Pokestop, you will get items. Now in this particular gym, we have a raid that's about to start, and that's indicated by the egg you can see up top. That counts down, and in 4 minutes and 25 seconds, a raid will pop. That means that a particularly powerful version of a Pokémon will take over the gym, so it won't be possible for the other team to knock my Pokémon out while the raid is happening. So what we can do is go in, battle the raid to get bonus XP, some candy, some other items that you can only get from raids, and a chance of catching a reasonably powerful version of that Pokémon. Back in the catch screen, we have one more thing to look at, and that is the berry button in the bottom left corner. So if I press that, I get a list of all the berries I have. Going from right to left, we have raspberries, which improve your chance of getting a catch. We have nana berries, which stop Pokémon from bouncing around. We have pineapple berries, which will double the candy that you get, and that's useful if you want to level up or evolve Pokémon later. Golden raspberries improve your catch rate even more, and silver pineapps will improve your catch rate halfway between a normal raspberry and a golden raspberry, and also still give you double candy. Over on the gym, the raid egg has now popped, and we can see that a Mawile has taken over. So we go back into the gym. And you can no longer see the Pokémon in the gym. Instead, we have this 9,000 CP Mawile here, and we want to go in a battle. Doing raid battles costs you a raid pass, and you can get one free raid pass every day from spinning gyms. But you can only hold one at a time. So you basically have to use your pass, and then spin a gym to get a new one. You can also buy these in the shop. Those are called premium raid passes, and you can hold as many as you want of those. They don't actually have any other features. It's just a way to distinguish the free one from the paid ones. So we'll use the pass. And go into battle. Pokemon Go will recommend a team to attack, but the recommendations aren't great. So you might be better off setting up your own teams. And again, I will go through that once we get back to the studio. Also, there's another video. For every raid battle, once you start the raid, there is a two minute timer that counts down to let other people join you. If you just press the big battle button, then anybody nearby can join. And you do have to be within range of the gym to do that. Otherwise, underneath the big battle button, you would have seen a bit of text saying private. Click on that and you can set up a private lobby that only your friends can join when you give them the code. Fighting in a battle is pretty simple. Just tap on the screen and you'll do your Pokémon's fast attack. The bars you can see near the bottom there are the charge attacks filling up. Once one of those bars is full, I can tap on the button there to release the charge attack. You can also dodge by swiping left and right. You'll still take some damage when you dodge, particularly if it's the battling Pokémon's charge attack. So most of the time I just don't bother. In the bottom right corner, there's a button you can use to swap this Pokémon out and swap another one in if maybe you have the wrong one. This Blaziken, I've actually spent quite a lot of Stardust and Candy to put two moves on it. And once again, that'll be explained in another video. So we've defeated the raid boss. It is now going to shrink and we will get some rewards and then the opportunity to catch this, and if I'm lucky, this will be a shiny. Probably not, though. That win five raids there, that's because I already had a research task from a Pokestop to win a bunch of raids to get an encounter. Over in this screen, you'll see these are a bunch of Premier Balls, and the numbers beside them are the numbers of balls I got depending on what I achieved during that battle. So in this case, defeated the boss gets you an automatic six balls. That happens every time you win a raid. I did the most damage in the raid because I'm the only one here. So I got three balls. The gym is red, controlled by my team. So I got another two balls. And again, my team was the only one in the group. 
so I get an automatic three balls. Normally that's split down between the damage breakdown per type. So in total, I have 14 Premier Balls, which means 14 chances to catch the Mawal Raid boss. Now it won't be 9,000 CP when I catch it. It'll be much smaller because the Pokemon you get from raids are level 20, unless they're weather boosted, in which case they're level 25. Yeah, there's a lot going on, and that's why I've split a lot of it into separate videos. It's all in a playlist, so you should be able to find that in the links below or on my channel homepage. So, let's go to the challenge. And it's not shiny. By the way, the reason the number of these Premier Balls is crucial is because you cannot use your normal balls farmed from stops in order to do this. You can only catch the raid boss with the Premier Balls. The good thing is, it won't spontaneously run if it doesn't catch, but on the other hand, it will definitely run if by your 14th throw, you don't catch it. There we go. And with that, it's time to go back inside. Back in the studio, and I'm gonna talk you through some of the things you can do from the comfort of your own home. First off, if you tap your avatar in the bottom left corner, you'll bring up the trainer screen. This is where you can see your level, your XP, things like your buddy, change your avatar's clothes, and if you scroll down, you can see things like your gym badges that you've collected and the progress you've made on medals. I won't go into too much detail on this, but basically, medals count the number of different Pokemon types that you've caught, and the more you catch, the higher up your medal gets, and as your medal levels up, you get a little bonus that makes it a little bit easier to catch Pokemon in the future. But really, I want to talk about friends. So in the top right corner of this screen, you'll see a thing that says friends. Tap that and you get to your friends screen. Up in the top, you'll see a big green button saying add friend. Hit that and you get your own trainer code, plus a section in the bottom where you can add other people's trainer codes. When someone's added your trainer code, you'll get a little thing up there saying that someone's invited you to be their friend. So you can hit that and say yes, or just ignore them. So to share your trainer code, you can either hit the button saying share my trainer code, that brings up the share features in your phone that lets you share a pre-written message along with your code and you can send that wherever. Or you can just hit copy my trainer code and that copies just the number, which you can then type your own message and paste that into whatever you want. Do your friends a favor and don't just take a screenshot of your code and then send that out because then they have to flip between apps and remember the numbers and type them out. When if you just sent them the code as text, they could just highlight the whole thing, paste it, and it's all done and dusted in a few seconds. So don't be that guy or girl. The easiest way to share codes in person is to use a QR code. So you'll see next to the number, there's a little boxy looking thing. Press on that and it'll display your own trainer code, which other people can then scan using their app and it automatically sends the invite. Or if someone's showing you their QR code, you can go into the top right section there where it says QR code, that brings up the scanner, hold that over their code, and you automatically send them an invite. Easy. Down at the bottom, if you've attached Pokemon Go to your Facebook account, then you can add friends through that. But why would you actually want to add friends? Well, you get a bunch of bonuses depending on how close friends you are in the game system. So the most obvious one, and I mentioned it earlier, is that when you're at spinning Pokestops, you'll pick up gifts. Once you have friends in the system, you can send those gifts out to your friends, you get a tiny bit of XP, and they get a bunch of items. And they also get a nice little postcard that shows where you've been. So bear in mind, those postcards do usually have locations attached, and it's a nice feature to be like, hey, look at this cool thing I saw. But also, if you happen to be sending out a lot of gifts from your home, just be aware that it does help people place where you've been. Gifts are also the only way you can get a special type of egg. These eggs take seven kilometers to walk, and they tend to have a slightly different pool of Pokemon that they could be. So you can get Alolan forms of Pokemon, or you can get babies, or you can get all sorts of other stuff. Niantic do change the egg pools a lot, so I'm not gonna list them here. If you go into your friend's screen, you'll see under your friend's name in the top left corner will be a bunch of little hearts. Those show you the levels of friendship that you have. The better friends you are, the better bonuses you get for doing gym raids. And if you're ultra friends or best friends, then you can challenge each other to PvP without actually having to be near each other. So there's a few benefits to ranking up your friends. Earlier, I mentioned battle teams. Now these are where it's at when it comes to gym raids and PvP. This is a section where you can set up groups of Pokemon so that you're ready to fight if you're challenged to PvP, or when you're going into a gym raid or just doing a gym battle, your top fighters are already set up for you. So in order to do that, go into your Pokemon bag and in the top left, you'll see a thing called party. 
Hit that, and as you scroll down, you'll see Great League, Ultra League, Master League, and then at the bottom, Gyms and Raids. So the first three sections there are for PvP. You can choose up to three Pokémon, but you can set up multiple teams, so you can have different combinations of Pokémon depending on who you're fighting. Down at the bottom is what you get when you go into a Gym Battle or a Gym Raid, and that can be up to six Pokémon. So set those up in advance, and then when you're actually in the Gym Raid or Battle, you can just swipe left to see all the teams that you've already set up. Personally, I like to have one general battle team for all the gyms, and I just throw all my match amps in there, and then I set some others up for the current tier 5 raid bosses. Over in the top right hand corner, you'll see a section called eggs. Hit that, and that's where all the eggs that you got from spins or from opening gifts will be found. You can hold up to 9 eggs at a time, and there's no way to delete eggs, so you have to walk them. Everybody starts with one free incubator, and that's the orange one. If you press the button in the bottom right corner, you'll be able to see your incubators. And you can either buy these from the shop, or you can get them from things like special research. Tap the incubator you want to use, and then tap the egg you want to put it in. Or do it the other way around. Tap the egg first, and then go into the incubators. So that's it for the very basics on how to play Pokémon. Today I've gone through going outside, spinning Pokestops to get items and eggs, gyms and how to do gym and raid battles. At home I've gone through setting up your friends and what you can get from that, setting up your battle parties to make the gyms and raid battles and PvP easier, and putting eggs in incubators. So that's enough to get you started. Best of luck with Pokemon Go and you can find out so much more if you go through my beginner's guide playlist which should be linked below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye!